We got a release year for Horizon Forbidden West, a look at a new machine, and we also learned the names of some of those new machines and way, way more. So let's go over all the new info in this video. A like would be super appreciated. And let's go. First up, a quick reminder for my June giveaway for a 2020 game of your choice on your platform of choice. And you can enter via the link in the pinned comment. And you have to be a subscriber of the channel if you want to participate. I will email and announce the winner in early July. And no Horizon Forbidden West is not part of this giveaway because this game is coming out in 2021. Matthijs de Jonge, the game director on this PS5 title and also the game director on the first game shared that they were aiming for a 2021 window and with him especially saying aiming it makes me think that this likely a second half of the year title so maybe September like spider-man in 2018 because Sony usually wants to avoid the crowded holiday period but yeah I don't think we should expect an early or first half of 2021 release date because then he would be more sure that they would hit 2021 in general right the original horizon also first had a 2016 window when it was first announced at e3 2015 but then got slightly delayed late to February 2017. So everything is possible and I'm sure that Sony will give them all the time that they need. Although I think that 2021, four years after Horizon Zero Dawn, seems like the right time. And man, I got extra hyped after listening to Matthijs de Jonge in this video. We already saw the insane graphics, of course, in the trailer, but thanks to the PS5, there will also be virtually no loading screens. Like we should be able to open up the map and then fast travel and like spawn on that location in no time or boot up the game and be right into the action. Yes, please, like think of all the extra things you could do if you did not have that minute long load screen when booting up the original all the time. This also confirms likely a similar style of fast travel system as we saw in the original, although I hope that we can save our game like everywhere in the world instead of only at these campfires. And a fast travel system will be great because the world of Horizon Forbidden West will be a bit bigger than we saw in Zero Dawn. They also want to go deeper and then they are of course talking about the new underwater gameplay that has been added. So now more of the world will actually be used because we can dive and explore these areas now. Most extraordinary of all are those reports of a lake 100 times the size of Daybrink. So wide the far shores can not be made out and so deep that an entire city of ancients stands drowned within. And this is from that Forbidden West data point that you can find in Horizon Zero Dawn over here on the map and then on this ship. So maybe this is referring to San Francisco and how that is fully underwater now. And I would love it by the way if we could dive like close to the Golden Gate Bridge that we already saw in the trailer and then maybe find Alcatraz as an underwater location. I mean it's relatively close to the bridge and obviously in games the scale will not be realistic. We already saw the very building underwater in the trailer too and on reddit we have E1 who actually made an awesome image comparing real life buildings to their state in Horizon Forbidden West. Like we also saw the palace of fine arts from San Francisco that is now fully underwater and also the Trans America pyramid can be seen in the distance when the Horizon Forbidden West title is shown. And there we also see the remains of the city hall. So Underwater exploration will already be awesome because it's the new gameplay element but it should be extra exciting because some of the underwater locations will be buildings that are familiar. Matthijs de Jonge in the video says that the danger lurks in every corner with the snap moss hunting the water waves. So you would think that they will attack us while we are underwater, right? Really curious like if there will be underwater fighting and what it will look like. And you would think that there are some new underwater only machines, right? But they likely want to keep them as a surprise. I mean, it's cool that we see the snap moss again. And I really hope that most of the machines that we saw in the original are back in the Forbidden West. But seeing new faces is of course more exciting. And we now learned that those swamp turtles are called shell snappers. And that those pterodactyl inspired machines are called sunwings. 
And we actually got a new screenshot with these machines. Like we already saw this plane in the trailer, but now we see the Sunwings patrolling there too. And I'm just curious, like we see many vertical spaces, old high buildings fully overgrown. Can we really not fly in this game? It seems pretty hard to reach everything by just climbing, you would think, right? Especially the early parts of the trailer seem almost impossible to explore without wings. We of course do see Aloy climb as well, but I'm curious if they will go ahead and add flying mounts. We already got a taste of it in the original thanks to the charger fly glitch that worked surprisingly well and especially with the power of the PlayStation 5, you would think that it's possible to add flying mounts. But maybe they want to hold it for the third game and now only focus on underwater exploration as the new gameplay elements. I mean, we do know that apart from the sun wings, another bird will be present in the game. Like, here we see the sun wings in the top left, but on the bottom left of this art, we see another bird-like machine that looks very similar to the Stormbird. And maybe I'm looking way too much into this, but it looks like the Stormbird has been overridden. Because, as you can see in one of my first Horizon Zero Dawn videos, if you override a Stormbird, it turns all blue and will then assist you in battle. And we see something similar in the art here. So, is Gorilla hinting at something here? You will also notice that all the sun wings have blue eyes too. So are they overridden as well? I got another theory about that though that I will save for a future video. So keep it locked for that. Well, I see you in notes that we will discover dozens of new machines. As I said in my previous video, we got 28 now with the Frozen Wilds DLC included. So I'm sure that we will hit the 40 and likely go even above that. And just like in the original, we will have to scan those machines in order to view their weaknesses and likely things we can use against them. But it seems to go a step further in this game. And we now learned that the mammoth-like machine is called the Tremor Tusk and it will be one of the bigger machines, so we should expect more big ones. And by the way, if you want to know how to properly spell the new names, Herman Hulst, previously of course the studio head at Guerrilla and now the boss of all the PlayStation Studios, got the names in a tweet. And I, by the way, asked him if we could fly the Sunwings, but he would not say. Not that I expected an answer, but you gotta try, of course. No, but what makes these Tremor Tusks interesting is that they seem to be different depending on if you encounter them in the wilds or if they are taken over by the new tribe that we see at the end of the trailer. Like we see the small huts on top of these machines, likely for archers, while if we encounter the Tremor Tusk while exploring the world, we likely do not have to worry about that, so they will be easier to take out. And we also see that thanks to the small icon that Gorilla released for the machine on the their Instagram also indicating that these icons on the map and in the catalog will likely be returning in the sequel. And maybe more machines will be different depending on if they are overridden by the new tribe or not, like we see them already try and override the boars that we do not have a name for yet. They gained the knowledge to override machines and I wonder who teach them that. I think it's pretty obvious. No, but I really like this as a gameplay twist, that we fight the same machines, but that they will have different weapons or things to worry about when overridden by the evil tribe. So not like Corrupted or Demonic, as we saw in the Frozen Wilds, but more like the Red Maw that only had one disc launcher instead of two, so it was still a similar machine with the same weaknesses, but a little harder because we could only use one disc launcher against it. And I'm sure that in the Forbidden West, this will go way further than just one disc launcher. Of course, I also want to touch on the new Raptor machine that we see in the key art. We see two of them close together, a sun wing above Aloy on the beach near the Golden Gate Bridge. I think this is also the box art for the game, although I'm not entirely sure. And I want to dive deeper into this awesome Raptor machine in a future video. And also talk more about the storm that we already see multiple times and way, way more. Like I kind of want to space my videos out and really go in depth 
on certain topics. So totally subscribe for way more on Horizon Forbidden West. To stay up to date on all the news, I will bring you all the details as fast as possible. Like this video to support the channel and totally check out my previous Forbidden West video on a breakdown of that reveal trailer and I talk about way way more there. So check it out if you haven't already. For now, I will speak to you next time and goodbye.